Hi, welcome to this class on faces, places, dates, and text. My name is Rich Harrington, and we're going to explore why metadata matters. Now, what it all comes down to is that your digital files contain your family history. But how easy is it to find this and share these photos based on all this rich information? Metadata is going to make it so easy for you to locate your most important photos, videos, and documents. Plus, if you embed these details into your files, you'll ensure that future generations can find these and enjoy them. You're going to learn how to tag all of the people in photos with an automated workflow that can recognize faces. I'll also show you how to add location data to connect images to specific locations. The text within documents or photos can be searched, which makes it easier to find things. And I'll show you how to assign meaningful dates to the scanned materials to help organize them. We'll also cover how to embed this information into the file itself. This way, as it moves around, it's going to be discoverable. And I'll show you how to work without the cloud to really control costs and protect your privacy. My name is Rich Harrington. I'm the product lead for Mylio Photos. I'm also a photographer and a photo educator, and I work in video production in the past. Through the years, I've written about 40 books on photography and have produced more than 200 courses to help people learn more about working with their images. I've also served as a consultant to many television networks and publications to help them manage their assets. So we're going to explore using a tool called Mylio Photos. It's a piece of software that's truly useful, and there's both a free and a paid version available. And Mylio Photos is really designed to help you access a lifetime of photos and videos with one secure library that you can access from any of your devices. You're able to install it on Windows, Mac OS, Android, or iOS, and have one single photo library that's truly accessible. The key thing here, though, is that it doesn't rely upon cloud storage. So you can store things at full quality where you need them and easily access them on other devices. For example, you could shrink a terabyte of photos down to just a gigabyte on a smartphone to have a browsable catalog if you have a small phone. But on something like a tablet or a laptop, you can keep everything fully editable at print resolution and easy to share shrinking a terabyte of photos down to about 40 gigs. But on your hard drives at home, you can keep the original full quality files available. So these are easy to access and share with future generations. Okay, let's jump right in and start to do some cool things. We're gonna start off by exploring how to tag people's faces. This way we can recognize a face in a photo and then find more faces pretty easily. We do this using people tags inside of Mylio Photos. Let me show you how easy it is. And what I really like is that all of this happens on your devices. Nothing is transferred up to the cloud or shared with anybody else. Okay, I've switched on over to my library here and I have a ton of different pictures I've recently loaded in. You can see here that I've scanned some photos in. I've got some ones I've started to color correct. Uh, in some cases, I've scanned the back of the photo. This was all made easy using my Epson Fast Photo Scanner. Let me go to the People tab here. When you do, you'll start to see people you've already scanned into your library. So these are people that I've identified that Mylio Photos knows. And I have a little bit of a sense of humor, so sometimes I scan and tag some of the pictures of other things. When I'm ready, I can click the Batch Tagging button here, and it's going to show me folks. In this case, this is my grandfather. I've already tagged a few photos of him, so Mylio Photos recognizes him through the years, from a younger man to more at close to his time of his death. I'll go ahead and approve those. You'll see here that it's found my grandmother. Same thing. And here are some pictures of me. Now, I've obviously aged since here, but these are some high school and college photos. And for the most part, it's gotten it right. In this case, this picture isn't me, and I'm not actually sure who it is. So for now, I'll just tell it to ignore that photo, and I can accept the rest. And you see here, it does pretty well. Sometimes when you get a lot of really young baby photos together, you're going to have to go through and identify which ones are you and which one's your daughter. Although I have to say, we do have the same nose. 
And you can see how simple that is. Plus, when it encounters pictures it's not sure who someone is, it'll group them together. For example, this here is my cousin when she's quite a bit younger. So if I click, it'll make suggestions, and if it doesn't know who it is, I can just start to type, and there she is. All right, I'll go ahead and exit for now. And those pictures have been added to my library. What's really cool about this is that later, this makes it super simple to find things. So when you're in a view like all photos, or maybe you wanna go exploring on a map, you can actually see people based upon their pictures. And maybe I wanna see all the places I've traveled with my wife. I could just click here on filter and then filter by a specific person. Type in the name and let's just zoom out here. And now you're seeing some of the photos that we've taken on trips. That's pretty cool. Now, in this case, I'm working with a smaller subset of my library. So you can see that it's placed these pictures in and it's very easy to see. But if you're working with something that doesn't come from, say, a smartphone, you can also manually add that information. We do this with a process called geotagging. Milio Photos makes it very easy to drag and drop pictures onto a map. You can find a specific location and then add them to your map to make them easier to discover. This is great too because it means that later those pictures can actually be found. All right, let me show you. I have some scanned photos here and I'm going to select a few and add information. For example, let's choose a couple here from back in college. I have some photos of me at a basketball game. Now, if I look at this, I see a few things that aren't quite right. We'll talk about the dates a little bit later. But for now, let's come down here to places. And I see that they're really not known. So what I'll do is add them to a particular location. I'll just click on map. Here, I can search. I'll type in a name and I can navigate. And here we are. Now, I actually know pretty well where this is. I'm looking and I see our stadium here. And if I remember right, this should be where we played basketball. So I can take those pictures and just drag and drop them onto the map. When I confirm, you'll see that information has been added to those photos, which is really cool. For example, let's open up one of these pictures. Now you're seeing that it's offering for more face tags here because as it detects pictures, it wants me to go ahead and add those people. I'll do that a little later. But in the upper right hand corner here, you see a cool icon. This is called Photo Explorer. The benefit of Photo Explorer is that your pictures often contain GPS data. This means that you know where a picture was taken, whether it was captured by the camera itself or you added it like I just did. This is really cool because now some of your favorite memories can launch new adventures. When you click on this, you'll get a choice to browse and explore the location on the web. Let me show you what that looks like. I'll just simply click and take a look. The web browser launches and you can actually choose which area you're looking at. Here, I see the specific location. That's right, it was called the Nap Center. Maybe I'm traveling and I want my kids to go to a basketball game with me. Well, I could take them there. I've got driving directions. I can make a phone call and buy tickets or go to the website. That's pretty cool. And when I take a look here, we can actually zoom in to see more information. So maybe I want them just to get a little bit more of an idea of what this looks like. Well, look how cool this is. We can see additional related photos and kind of take a look at what's nearby. For example, how about a 360 view? This lets me kind of get an idea of where we're at. And for example, as I zoom on down the road, here we go. Suddenly, I'm back to my college dormitory. 
and that brings back some wonderful memories. Or taking a look around campus. You see how awesome this is that we can really explore and rediscover things. One memory can create a new memory. Speaking of memories, sometimes you're going to have documents inside your photo library. There's a wide range that could drive this. Maybe it's something you scanned in or something else like a document that you found online. Let's clear out these filters for just a second and search. And I'll type in the word graduation. In many cases, it's found pictures with different types of things. Here's some pictures of my son's graduation, for example. But it also read the word graduation right on this certificate here from my daughter's preschool graduation. Type in the word commencement. And suddenly it's the announcement from my graduate school, which is pretty cool. As you scan photos too, remember, Mylio gives you easy ability to quickly edit photos. You can make adjustments, straightening the photo, or even do things like auto color to fix a washed out image. It's great that by searching by text here, I was able to find a photo that I'd misplaced. But you also may come across things like this when looking through records. For example, here's some information about my grandfather. And let's say I want to keep this. With just a click, you could choose to save the image. And whether you're on your desktop device or your mobile device, Mylio adds a great shortcut called the Mylio Inbox right inside your application. You can access it from anywhere. The Share menu, the Save menu, etc. I'll just give this a descriptive name. Adding good names will make it easier to find things as well in the future. And I'll save. Now, let's switch back over to Mylia. Let's go into the inbox here. And you can see it's actually scanning my drive here for any changes. There we go. And it found it. Plus, in the background, things are still syncing and being updated on all my devices. So there's that file. And it was able to locate it. But here's what's awesome. Let's say later on, I don't know where that is. I can't find it or I don't remember. With just a search here, I can type in a word. For example, John. And let's take a look at all photos. Well, look at this. It was able to read the word John in lots of places. We have the word John on the Vietnam Wall. Here's John on a memorial at the Twin Towers. And here's that article. If I was more specific of John W. Harrington, it would have found it as well. Now, this is not a particularly high-res source, and that's one of the dangers of storing things online. You end up that oftentimes, files are greatly reduced in quality. So I suggest that you always keep them locally as well, not just posted to online archives. And we'll talk more about that in just a moment. That Mylio inbox command is truly useful, so make sure you explore it. This way, when you're on the go and you discover a message on a social network, or maybe your parent texts you a great photo from the past. With one click, it's in your Mylio library and ready to be organized later. All right, what about those scanned photos? Well, one of the challenges with scanned materials is that they often lack dates. Plus, when you scan from a negative, a print, or a slide, it assigns the date of the current time when you capture that as a digital file, not when it was made. Plus, if you're working with things from social networks, a lot of times the information is stripped or missing. Fortunately, Mylio Photos makes this really easy. Let's go back here to my All Photos view for a second. And I see that I have some photos with details. One of the things that's cool here is that there's information about the picture added to the back of the photo. My Epson Fast Photo Scanner was able to actually capture that information. So here, I've got something pretty specific. Let's go ahead and modify this. I'll just go back to the grid view, and I'm gonna select those two photos and rotate them. And I'll take advantage of Auto Color, which we'll talk more about later. 
but it quickly fixes pictures. Now, from the info panel, I've got some information. This picture was not from February 2023. That's when I just happened to scan it. But if I click here, I can assign a specific information. Now, I don't know the exact time of this photo, but I do know when. So I can say that this was February 10th, 1972. And I'll just assign the day. And click Save. Now that picture is updated with new information. Plus, it's going to be stored in the correct location when I look at it later in my photo library. It'll sort the information chronologically, which is very cool. As you start to explore things, you'll see that oftentimes you do have good details. Sometimes, maybe not precisely. So as I look at a picture here with me and my grandfather, here's the back of the photo. December 1974. Okay. That's better, and I could assign some broad information. So let me select those pictures, and I'll come here and just assign a month and a year. December 1974, and save. And now they update and move to the correct location within my photo library. Notice this is really useful because you can assign approximate details about a photo. Mylio Photos will let you assign a very specific information, a range of dates if you're not sure, season, year, decade, or you can mark them as undated so you know to sort them and organize them later. What's cool about this is it means that as you start to view things on a calendar, you'll be able to go through and relive memories. For example, I can go back to 2010 and see some of the projects I worked on at my job, trips I've made, memories, for example, traveling and visiting family members, a soccer game we went to with the extended family, Christmas Eve with my mom, pictures with Santa. You get the idea. This makes it easy for you to revisit and see things in your life. You can learn more about the life calendar on Milio's website, but there's a lot of great things you can do with it. And remember, when working with scanned material, Milio Photos makes it really easy to fix it. You've seen Auto Color, and we'll have an adjustment called Auto Tone as well that makes it easy to fix the contrast. Plus, if you're working with things scanned from film, we can fix that as well. Let me show you quickly. For example, here I have some pictures from my wedding. These were scanned from film negatives, hence the unusual look. Well, what's great here is we can go into the color section and just click invert to turn the negative into a positive. But sometimes when you scan film or you're dealing with an old photo, it could change over time. Looking at the different color pieces of information here, you see how the different color channels are all shifted and not properly aligned. When I click the auto button, everything snaps into place. And now I have proper color information. Plus with just a few simple sliders, you could easily adjust things and bring a photo back to life. Once that's done, super simple. You can copy those adjustments, go back to something like the grid view and select the other photos that you want to process and just paste those edits and all the pictures are quickly enhanced. And you see that's really quite useful. Plus, if we look at the info here, you'll see that I knew the day, but not the exact time. So these scanned photos are more accurately represented on my life calendar. As you can see with Mylio Photos, it's really simple to do things with your images. Our mission is to make it easy to preserve a lifetime of memories so they can be discovered and shared. We also protect those though, which is really important. So Mylio Photos turns your computer, phones, tablets, and storage devices into a single powerful network. All your things are connected and you can see all your photos from all your devices. This means that you have a single photo library that's always accessible. You can find, edit, and easily share those photos 
And you can even work when you don't have an internet connection and the cloud isn't required. This means you can view even the largest library on a laptop or a phone. You've seen how I can search with face details, text, camera information, geotags, data, so much more. And from any device, you can edit and enhance. Plus, you don't need to be online to do this, so it means that you can browse your picture from anywhere. And what's great is your pictures are protected because hard drives fail, cell phones get lost. It's important that you have this material backed up to multiple locations. Now, what I really like is that Malia Photos works cloud-free. If you really want to use the cloud, Malia Photos will let you choose a provider, but it works independent of the cloud. And that's becoming increasingly important. First up, every picture from all your devices are going to get backed up to a hard drive that's connected to your local or home computer. And the process is really quite fast. If you look here in my Mylio Photos library, you'll see I've got a bunch of devices. Now, since I work on the product team, I've got a lot of devices connected because I test it pretty hard. But notice here, all these different computers are there. For example, my laptop is currently asleep, but once I open it up, it will discover it no matter where it is. Whether that's the same network that I happen to be on at home or somewhere else around the world. My devices can see and talk to each other at any point in time, and it will start to synchronize. So soon, my laptop's gonna download the 578 pictures that it's missing. And you can see that they've started to transfer, which is really cool. All my devices are securely connected to each other, whether they're being backed up or not. Everything I've marked as a vault is keeping a full quality copy so I've got some large hard drives here from Seagate that I can connect to, but you can use any hard drive as a backup and it will mean that it connects and stores full quality copies. So whenever I take a picture on my phone, import something on my laptop, browsing on my tablet and add it to my Mylio library, it's automatically transferred and backed up to my vaults and protected. This is really quite cool and it really makes it easy to know that your photos are safe. And while I love that I don't have any per terabyte storage fees with cloud providers, I love the privacy more. Your photo library contains a ton of information about you, where you've gone, who you've seen. So for example, if I just type in the word password, you'll see that in your library, you may have lots of passwords. Whether it be uh, important information that you accidentally screenshotted from a website, the photo of the back of my router because I couldn't see it and I needed a picture so I could type in the default code. A photo over someone's shoulder in the office. And you might be saying, well, where's the word password here? Well, computers can edit photos and enhance them and actually find things. So it's really kind of important that you don't put all this information in the cloud. It opens you up to data theft, personal information and invasion of privacy. So I suggest you keep it in a place that's secure and private. So with Mylio Photos, you're never gonna lose a photo or video again. All your devices will stay in sync automatically. Mylio Photos seamlessly unites the computers, hard drives, phone, and tablet so they can see and talk to each other. And it means that everything is automatically protected. One single library. Plus, if you do decide to put things out to the cloud, Mylio Photos will encrypt the information so only your devices can read it. Remember, this is great because it means that you can take a very large photo library and optimize it so it fits on a tablet or laptop or even a smartphone. Your full quality files are safe at home on multiple vaults, but no matter where you are, the couch, the coffee shop, or an airplane, you can see and view and organize your photos even without an internet connection. Once you've started making changes to those pictures, remember, you can easily select a bunch of photos that you've modified and simply save the metadata to the file. This will cause those files to be updated with the information so other apps have it. Or if you decide you wanna share some pictures, maybe I wanna send these to my wife really quick, with just a click of the share menu, I can share these using a variety of services, 
or just copy and paste them on my clipboard and add them to any document or application. It's that simple. Let's just brighten up my wife's day for a moment. If I was posting to a social network, I can use SafeShare to remove personal information from the photos. But since this is going to a trusted family member, I'll just send them with the information. Well, I hope you enjoyed this look of how you can organize your images. I invite you to stop by and learn more about Milio Photos. We're exhibiting at Roots Tech, or you could check out our website. We have a ton of resources and information to make it easy to get up and running. A detailed help menu, a product manual that covers all features, a quick start guide, interactive community and video, plus a team of live people available to meet through our support groups and live events. Remember, with Mylio Photos, you'll always have your photos on any device. You're never going to lose a photo or video again. And with great search and filter tools, it's so easy to find your favorite images and you can edit and share with just a few clicks. Thanks again for checking out this session. And I hope you enjoyed learning about faces, places, dates, and text, why metadata matters. My name's Rich Harrington, and I hope that you can have a more organized and enjoyable photo library that's ready to share with future generations.